What's up guys, welcome to another one you already know. It's time for tennis. Happy New Year by the way. If everybody hasn't told you that already, I will. So this is a review of the Vocal V Feel V8 Pro. I'm just gonna call it the V8 Pro. Should be a little more memorable. Yep, it's a racket by Vocal. You don't see too many Vocal rackets out there, but you know, you see a lot of people talk about Vocal Cyclone strings. That's a very popular string on the tour and you guys might know that I'm an advocate of their Vocal V-Dry Overgrip. I think it's an overgrip that is kind of what I call the turn grip killer. You can watch my video on why. I might do another one again later, but it's a really high quality, dry weather grip. It's more durable than Turna. It's black, which is nice, just because that's a color that goes with everything. Turna is that weird blue color, which is iconic, but you know, not everybody's into it. And Turner just really cheaps out on just everything. Like, I think the feel is a really special thing. You know, the Turner, just the way that it feels and works. But they don't even have an adhesive start. They don't taper the top or the bottom part of the grip. They really just give you a strip of material. And you got to kind of make it work yourself. So I don't really respect that. I think that's kind of lame. But yeah. Vocal V-Dry, it's an overgrip you should try if you like Turna. You might like V-Dry better. I certainly do. So, I have good things to say about Vocal, but let me tell you a little bit about this racket. I don't have anything bad to say necessarily, but I got this racket because I am on this journey, as I mentioned in most of my videos, to find a racket that I can either extend or comes extended that I'm happy with. And I was never much for modifying rackets, but it's gotten to the point with my preference and extended length rackets that the limited options on the market leave me to either go to a racket company that makes extended length rackets, or I will find a standard length one I like and then extend it somehow. So I'm more of a 1620 or an 1820 guy. All the rackets on the market are 1619 for extended pretty much, except for a couple of absolutely wacky options that I'm not interested in. So here I am trying a racket that has a really low swing weight and a pretty low static weight. So it's also 1820, which I like, and it has some other stuff that, you know, seems promising on paper, but ultimately it's a racket that looks like if I like it, I can probably extend it up to a full inch, no problem, still be able to play good tennis with it without being too much for me. So that's why I bought it. I wanted to get to know it and just give it a chance because it's one of the only few left for me to really try that I would consider worthy. And yeah, why not make a little review in the process? So the first thing that really caught my eye about this racket, besides all the specs, was the color. I thought it was a very interesting racket. I really like the look, that black hoop on the inside. I can show you guys some footage here of some funny details regarding this racket, because the first thing I do whenever I get one of these is extend it half an inch. I probably should have said that at the beginning of the video. But yeah, the first thing I did was take off the butt cap and put one of these XTP butt caps on here and yeah you can see some pictures of uh, the handle it's just kind of unusual I've never seen a handle like this one I'll just let these pictures kind of play out but you can sort of see for yourselves here what some of the oddities are if you've ever taken apart a butt cap or looked inside the handle of a racket you'll know that this is kind of unusual it's usually just either totally hollow or sometimes it's foam filled like it is on the V-Core 95 and the diadem rackets but this one has like an extra chamber inside and it's designed to fit this butt cap piece that sort of feels like some kind of silicone material maybe it's sort of a hard silicone with a really jelly kind of layer as well and the butt cap is sort of this same material I think that's what they advertise as their dampening technology, or at least part of it is. I'm not exactly sure, to be honest, but their butt cap had sort of a squishy feel, which is neat. Maybe it won't dig into your palms so much, but I ultimately just had to remove it anyway because of the modification that I'm doing. And I actually thought about keeping it. Maybe it's a butt cap I'll get to know a little bit, but for now, I don't think this is a racket I'm going to keep, so I'm probably not going to extend it, and I wonder how hard it would be to extend it the way that uh, most people do racket extensions by filling out the inside material when this racket kind of takes up all that space with this weird chamber system that they have going on in here. So 
Anyway, that being said, I don't think I'm going to keep the racket, and the reason is mostly because I think the racket kind of has this hollow feel that I'm not a big fan of. The swing weight and all that stuff is the same as the V-Core 95, but I feel like the V-Core 95 just goes through the ball so much better. I get a lot more weight and power and control and feel with the V-Core 95 that I really just don't get... I mean, I'm not sure I really get anything from this Vocal V8 that the 95 doesn't seem to offer me more of. So, I just don't see a reason to switch to this racket. It's just not giving me something that I want or that I'm missing from the V-Core 95. It just feels like less of a racket in a lot of ways. It kind of has that sort of cheap, hollow racket feel to it. The V-Core 95 has a very dense and just kind of expensive feel. I don't really know how to describe it compared to the hollow the hollow feeling, but it sort of feels like a light Babolat in a way, but maybe the flex is a little more forgiving or something like that. It's somewhere in between sort of a generic Babolat feel and something else. This racket actually reminds me a lot of the Headspeed Pro, but I think the Headspeed Pro at the same time is a much nicer racket. And I haven't hit with that in a long time, but I just kind of look at it in the string pattern it's an 18 by 20, but it's also 100, which is kind of unusual, but more common these days, I guess. I don't know why it's more common these days, but I'm kind of into that. But yeah, I feel like the 18 by 20 100 was probably a racket that wouldn't have been made until recently. So I like the idea of it, but this is not one that I would get. It just feels like a cheap head speed pro. In, in this part of the video, I'm just hitting with the V-Core 95 now, and as soon as I started hitting with the V-Core 95, I was just thinking, yeah, this feels so much better. And there are certain shots that, I, you know, because I know the racket better, so it's not totally fair to say that I'm just able to play better with it, because obviously part of that is just due to me being more used to it, but sometimes you just know within like 20 or 30 seconds of hitting a racket that this is just, it feels so much better, and this other racket is just never going to feel that good. Sometimes you just know that, right? So I think that's the case with this one. I just I don't want to disregard it like that so quickly because I feel like I'm sort of maybe dismissing it just because the name or something isn't as big of a name brand as some of these other rackets like Yonex and stuff. Vocal's not that not that relevant outside of their strings in the tennis world. I feel like people don't talk about or really seek out their rackets too much. I feel like Vocal sometimes catches the attention of people when they develop arm problems sometimes. Honestly, I don't really know what draws someone's attention over to Vocal in the first place. What what would it be? Is it the fact that they have their name present in, in the world of tennis strings more so? Or is it the other industries that they're big in, like skiing and whatnot? So what, what brings your attention to Vocal Rackets is my question. Because the only reason this one came to my attention really is because it was one of the only viable looking rackets for my weird goals with rackets which is find one with a low swing weight and 20 cross strings that I can extend but I think the handle thing might make it more difficult to extend anyway now that you've seen the inside of that and then on top of that I'm just not really not really vibing with the racket too much I can play fine with it but I just don't love it I just don't it's just not offering me that feel and that power even there's something about the way that the V-Core 95 just goes through the ball and the Vocal V8 kind of struggles too. And you could talk about adding weight here and there, but the reality is, is that the V-Core 95 is a smaller head size and the swing weight should be the same, but for some reason it just so dramatically goes through the ball better. It's like not even a fair comparison. So that kind of tells me something about this racket and probably how things are going to go down the road so i mean it's one of those things where i just tried it and kind of immediately lost my enthusiasm so i'm not going to fight that too much i'm not going to try to say i haven't given it enough time i'm sort of it was just so obvious you know but i'm also at a point where i'm kind of trying to figure out what my next racket is going to be so this one did not make the cut but there are i think maybe two more rackets i might try but that's probably it so yeah, the V-Core 95 has survived this long, and I probably imagine that it will for a while. And I think the next record I might have to try is probably going to be that uh, Aero Pro Versus.
And if that one doesn't really do it for me or doesn't really feel like it's a worthy competitor to the V-Core 95 in the ways that I like it, then that might be it. Besides the racket that I'm having custom manufacture, which I'll share and talk about more in future videos. But yeah, for now, that's just my little review on the V8 Pro. And I don't know if I'd necessarily recommend the racket. I feel like if you like a racket like that, then you'd probably like the Head Speed Pro better. You might even like some of the head gravities better. I can't think of a racket at the moment where if you like this, you should really try the V8 Pro. I just feel like it's the other way around. If you like the V8 Pro, you should try this other one. Whoops. All right. Well, that's my alarm. I got to call my friend back. So that's, that's the end of my voice over that I'm going to do for this video. So if you like the content, you know what to do. You can subscribe. You can comment. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, I hope you guys can stick with me and see the journey to me finding my next racket. I might have a couple in the mix, it's possible, because I've tested quite a lot and there's a couple that I really enjoy, but I'm really trying to pick a favorite here, and if I have one, two, or maybe three favorites, that's okay. I can live with that, but I think it's going to be a process of funneling it down and picking favorites, and that's what I'm doing, and most of them just didn't make the cut. You saw my other videos where I'm selling off the E-Zone and the Babolat Pure Drives and all that stuff, so yeah, I'm cleaning, I'm cleaning out, and I'm picking favorites. That's what this part of the journey is about. So vocal, I'm sorry, but it's nothing personal. All right. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.